Hi everybody, my name is Jeremy Haft and I'm the CRO at Channel Factory. Brand safety, brand suitability, and contextual relevance are three key values in today's media ecosystem. We believe that where your ads appear matter, and so do consumers. In fact, 73% of consumers would be more likely to buy from brands whose ads are relevant to the content they're consuming. What is interesting is that these choices are so specific to each brand and agency. So guess what? Today, we set up a little game to help three media executives select the best content for their brands. First up, we have Vinny Rinaldi, Head of Investment and Activation at Group M Wavemaker, Melanie DiBiazio, Senior Manager, Digital Precision Marketing at Ocean Spray, and Alex Stone, Senior Vice President, Advanced Video and Agency Partnerships at Horizon Media. Hi, everybody. Thanks again for joining today. Hi, Jeremy. Thanks for having us. What's up, Jeremy? Thanks, Jeremy. Glad to be here. Appreciate you guys having me. Of course, I can't wait to see everyone in person, hopefully very soon. But guess what? Today, you're on a show called Channel Factory Idol, where you are the judges. Here's how it works. I will show you three videos. You either give me a suitable check or an unsuitable X and a brief explanation why. So let's kick it off with our friend Gordon Ramsay. If you turn that omelet out, I will staple my ass together in a heartbeat. I swear to God. What do you mean turn it out? What does turn it out mean? Turn it out means get it out of the fucking pan. Welcome to Scrambled, where I'm inviting new friends into my kitchen to make eggs. And today, trust me, I'm happy as a pig in shit because I have a prankster, a trickster, and one of the craziest fucking guys I know. Welcome, bud. Seriously. Yeah, dude. Oh. So, Mel, now that you've watched the Gordon Ramsay video, for an ocean spray, what would you think? Um, I would give this the unsuitable X. Um, you know, while recipe content can be relevant for our brand, I think there are some, there's some language and um, some content in this video that doesn't feel uh, suitable and right for our audience. All right, up next is Vinny. What do you think? It's a bit aggressive. It's certainly not a video. I don't think I could put any vertical or category of brand behind. You know, the language alone is really um, something that's hard to kind of get that brand, you know, suitability around. I think, um, you know, if I'm a, a food brand and I'm actually content targeting food and I get served around a Gordon Ramsay video where there's cursing all over the place, I'm going to be pretty upset with uh, my targeting capabilities and, and really don't want my brand around that. And Alex, what about you? As soon as I saw Steve-O in that video, I knew that there, there might be an additional layer of complexity and issue here. Um, you know, again, you know, Gordon Ramsay with, with his language is probably enough for a video like that not to be, uh, you know, recommended for, for our clients. But uh, with Steve-O as, as an additional layer and wild card of things not to do at home, um, I, I would say that basically canceled out that, that video for us. So what about the massive following? I believe Gordon Ramsay has 20 million subscribers on YouTube alone. Doesn't that scale that audience uh, attract you? I mean, of course, always, you know, when you're buying for reach, that, that's a massive following. And obviously, you know, a lot of eyeballs watch a lot of different content and it's, it's hard to really decipher or tell anybody what they should and should not be watching. But I think as a brand, you always have to protect your own um, identity. And you know, as, as good as your reach number could be, as great as you know, the amount of scale you can get off of a video like that, it's just at the end of the day, when you come back to it, you've got to just make sure that you're doing everything possible to protect that identity of, of your brand, whether you're a new to the market brand and or a iconic 100 plus year old brand. I just think that's super important to make sure that you're always constantly looking back at what the brand means to the consumer at the end of the day. Awesome. Thank you, Vinny. Mel, do you think there's other content that may align better with your brand and your brand values? I do. I actually think, you know, he, he certainly does things on television. He does things that are a little bit more censored or, or surrounding um, more appropriate content. So I think if you know, even if there were some bleeped out swears and it was minimal, um, you know, if it was around a, a better content or a better theme, I think it would make sense for our brand. I got it. So our platform actually rates this video unsuitable too. 
However, some brands are okay with profanity and this is why suitability can vary based on brand values. Now for our second video. We have Coco Melon. And for all the folks at home, Coco Melon is an animation show on YouTube featuring nursery rhymes for kids with an astounding 108 million subscribers. Take a look. So Mel, you've watched the video probably hundreds of times. What are your thoughts? Suitable, unsuitable, and why? Well, I think it's very suitable for my family as much as I would prefer to watch it a few less times. Um, I don't think it's suitable for the brand uh, because of the nature of advertising to, chil to children. Um, we certainly want to speak to parents, but I think on children-specific content, we would prefer to steer clear. Interesting. And Alex, what about you? I'm going to have to say no go with the cocoa. It's not, you know, again. No go. No go. No go with the cocoa. How come, Alex? Again, it's, it's about brand suitability, not brand safety. So while there's mm. nothing. All right. I'm going to have to agree. Safe, but, but, you know, it's not brand suitable. All right. Vinny, what about you? I'm going to have to agree with Alex. Um, there's a lot of COPA compliancy out there in advertising to children and you know, as much as my own children love to watch this content, it's not always the best place for a brand to be trying to depict and catch on to children under the age of 13. So I'm going to also go with the no-go. No-go no with the Coco. All right. We got a new tagline. Thanks, guys. <laughs> so as you can all see, the video is highly produced and our platform deems it suitable. But again, with a caveat that only for brands that are looking to align with kids' content. And on to our third video. Let's shake up a drink. Take a look. Hi, I'm Steven, and I'm a level one chef. Hi, I'm Julie, and I'm a level two chef. I'm Jeff, and I'm the 2020 recipient of the Nobel Prize in Cocktail Biophysics. I'm kidding, I'm just a bartender. Mel, third and final video. Making you thirsty? Yeah, I think I'd give this one a suitability check for sure. You know, it the recipes are obviously something people like to do with our products, and so this one worked well. All right, Vinny, what about you? I'm going to say it's a go with limitations. And what I mean by that is having the right category in place, you know, any of the liquor brands with the right um, targeting capabilities where age is a big factor. This would be great to surround my brand with um, if I am in the liquor industry. Outside of that, that's where you get to be a little bit dicey with what brands show up around this. Awesome, thanks Vinny. Alex, what about you? Yeah, no, no pun intended, no provision. You know, there are some provisions on that one, right? So again, alcohol brands, probably, you know, that's, that's a five star, that's, that's a great video to be in. Um, if you're an auto, you probably want to avoid that. Um, again, you want to make sure that there are the, the age restrictions um, and age targeting uh, implemented there as well. So you know, it's it's a good quality, non-UGC premium style video, which I know a lot of advertisers like, um, but it's, again, based on brand suitability there. Makes sense. Thank you. See, here, folks, here. Makes sense for some brands. We have to make sure that the contextual relevancy is right on point for that specific advertiser's goals and objectives. Thanks everybody so much for being here today. Bye, thank you for having us again, this guys. was really fun. Thank you for having us, Jeremy, we really appreciate it. As you can see, suitability is relative and depends highly on a brand's values, which is why a contextual solution should be easily customizable for what works best for you. With a vast amount of content across social platforms, finding the right content that makes sense for your brand is crucial. By leveraging advanced audio transcript, sentiment, and direct data ingestion for analysis, partners like Channel Factory can help you deliver suitable, contextually aligned, and highly efficient campaigns across platforms. Head over to our YouTube channel for more takes on marketing and media with our upcoming interview series, Channel Factory After Dark. I'm Jeremy Haft. Thanks for watching Channel Factory Idol.